This is the Gator Bowl at Jacksonville, Florida, the 1957 edition, a major postseason attraction matching two of the nation's top teams, Tennessee and Texas A&M. This is the climax in a wheel of wind activity. Many have come to watch, but many are participants in the dozens of events that make up Gator Bowl week. Sailboat races are held on the St. John's River, and what could be more natural in a land of winter sunshine? And for those who like water sports with the added thrill of speed, a marathon powerboat race fills the bill. These boats cover a 70-mile course. Growing events is the Gator Bowl Amateur Golf Tournament, a 54-hole challenge on one of the city's beautiful municipal courses. The entry list includes many of the finest golfers in the South. There's also an 18-hole Pro-Am contest. The whole downtown area of Jacksonville becomes the stage on the eve of the game, and thousands line the sidewalks to watch the colorful Gator Bowl Parade. Leading the way is the Drum and Bugle Corps of the U.S. Air Force. These are the high steppers of Hines Junior College in Mississippi. 70... There's never a gap in the bright beat of music. High school and college bands are here from schools all over the South. And what's a parade without colorful floats and beautiful girls? famous marching units in the country, the U.S. Marine Band from Paris Island, South Carolina. And here's the Gator Bowl Queen and her court. winds its way toward the Gator Bowl and touches off the annual Gatorama, a brilliant three-hour show playing to a crowd of 20,000. But everything else builds to the game itself, and excitement on Saturday is at a fever pitch. Representing the Southwest Conference in this 13th annual game are the Aggies of Texas A&M, coached by Paul Bear Bryant. Bryant led his club through a rough schedule to a splendid record of eight wins and two losses. Late in the season, the Aggies were rated as high as number one in the nation. Spark plug of the team is John Crow, everybody's All-American and winner of the Heisman Trophy. On hand from the rugged Southeastern Conference are the Tennessee Volunteers, led by another successful coach, Bowden Wyatt. The balls ground out seven wins with three losses during the regular season. Tennessee is famous over the nation for its crushing single wing offense, led this year by tailback Bobby Gordon. The addition of new seats this year guarantees the biggest crowd in Gator Bowl history, and over 43,000 will be here today. Some have come a long way to be onlookers. There are cars here from states all over the country, attesting to the nationwide interest in the Gator Bowl game. A few lucky ones have come to the game by water, and they can park barely two blocks away. 
The matching of Tennessee and Texas A&M has been tabbed a natural, and this game is already being called the Lucky 13. Observers over the country are saying that this may well be the best of the postseason games. Always on hand is Florida's Governor Leroy Collins, and in the dignitary's box are two officials of the Gator Bowl Association, President Julian Jackson and Selection Committee Chairman Sam Wolfson, along with Jacksonville Mayor Hayden Burns. The proceedings wouldn't be quite complete without the blessing of Her Majesty Queen Eulalia the Eleventh. The reigning monarch is lovely Frances Andrews of Jacksonville, who is presented with her court to the assembled crowd. Everything ready with the nation looking in on television and over a hundred sports writers set to cover the game. Let's begin the play-by-play -play description with Dick Stratton. Gator Bowl, Jacksonville, Florida. A record attendance of over 43,700. Wait for the kickoff of the 13th annual Gator Bowl game. A battle between the Southeastern Conference and the Southwestern Conference. In the white, Bobby Conrad gets ready to kick off with Texas A&M. Speed merchant, tailback Bobby Gorton, takes the pigskin three yards deep in his own end zone, sets sail up the middle, and returns to the 21-yard line. The orange and white of Tennessee, representing the Southeastern Conference in this intersectional rivalry, get things started from their own 22-yard line, when fullback Tommy Bronson, 195-pounder, hammers out nine big yards to the Tennessee 31. With his second down and a yard to go, tailback Bobby Gordon is called on, swinging into action, gaining a first down at the Tennessee 35-yard line. Single wing right for Tennessee. Volunteers on the move. First down, 10 yards to go at their own 35. Senior tailback Gordon hits the middle and is stopped by Newcomb after gaining just a yard. Gator Bowl, first quarter, no score, with Tennessee on the move. Fullback Bronson finds little running room, but does gain two yards. The Aggies' defense tightens, and with a third down and seven yards to go, on the Tennessee 38, tailback Bobby Gordon goes back in punt formation. John Crow is waiting for the punt, takes it at the Texas A&M 22, and Crow battles back to the Aggie 36-yard line. Texas A&M, one of the nation's powerhouses in college football, gets their first offensive chance of the Gator Bowl game with quarterback Osborne keeping and gaining two yards around end. With a second down and eight yards to go for the Aggies at their own 38, All-American halfback John Crow carries for the first time of the game and bangs out two yards. The volunteers of Tennessee halt the Aggies' attack. And with it fourth and six, Conrad is back in punt formation at his own 28-yard line. All-time great tailback Bobby Gordon hauls the pigskin in for Tennessee at the Volunteer 19, maps out a course downfield, bowls over would-be tacklers, and streaks for daylight. Gordon is off on a sensational 71-yard punt return. Lunging into the end zone for a touchdown, Tennessee. And the Volunteers take the lead, six to nothing. But cheers turn into groans as Tennessee is penalized 15 yards for clipping, nullifying a sensational touchdown trip. Gator Bowl first quarter and already plenty of excitement. Tennessee first and 10 at midfield. Fullback Bronson on the carry, but a host of Aggies join in to throw him for a three-yard loss. It's the Tennessee single wing against the Texas A&M As tailback Bobby Gordon goes airborne for the first toss of the Gator Bowl game, hitting right end Tommy Potts for a 10-yard gain. There's plenty of hard blocking and tackling on the Gator Bowl turf today. And with two yards needed for a first down, they call on Mr. Dependable, tailback Bobby Gordon. He runs into Taylor, Beck, and Newcomb after gaining just a yard. With a fourth down and a yard to go for Tennessee at the Texas A&M 41, senior fullback Brunson is called on to deliver the mail. 
And he comes through hurdling over for a volunteer first down. But again, the Aggies build up a stone wall defense, and with it fourth down, 11 yards to go for Tennessee here in this scoreless Gator Bowl game, Gordon punts to John Crow, who signals for a fair catch at the Aggie 14. So from Texas way, the Aggies take over first and 10 at their own 14, with quarterback Milstead gaining five yards over left tackle. The Aggies using that unusual formation, strong to the left side, with halfback Conrad driving over left side for a four-yard gain. With two yards needed for a first down from their own 23, sophomore quarterback Milstead rambles for four more yards, and the Aggies picked up their first gainable first down of the football game. Texas A&M lined up, unbalanced, strong to the right side, with quarterback Milstead gaining three over right tackle behind power blocking. From their own 29, it's third down, seven yards to go. Fullback Gordon LeBuff gets off a quick kick. Pigskin rambles for the out-of-bounds mark at the 18-yard line of Tennessee. Gator Bowl, first quarter, no score. Tennessee owning possession of the pigskin. First down and 10 at their own 18. But they respond with the same weapon. Gordon gets off a quick kick. Conrad racing to haul it in at his own 38 and is tackled by Anderson at the A&M 45. A&M taking over offensively now. First down, 10 yards to go at their own 45. The quarterback is Milstead. He looks to pass, throws and completes it to Smith. It's a 10-yard game. But the Aggies are guilty of clipping, and it costs them a 15-yard penalty. Now it's third down, 13 yards to go at their own 42. The Aggies call on the big train, John Crow, who spins into the middle for a five-yard gain. But it's not enough for a first down, and the Aggies are forced to punt. We're now late in the first period of the Gator Bowl game. From the Tennessee 14, Gordon goes back as if to quick kick. Instead, runs nicely, rambling out six yards around left end before Dick Gay runs him out of bounds. Jarring tackles have been the feature of the Gator Bowl game thus far. The Aggies force Tennessee's Bobby Gordon to punt close to his own goal line. John Crow waiting for the punt, gathers it in but fumbles, but recovers at the Tennessee 45. With the first quarter of the 1957 Gator Bowl game coming to an end, the score Tennessee nothing, Texas A&M nothing. In the second period of play, with a fourth down and four yards to go for the Aggies at the Tennessee 39, John Crow hammers over right tackle for close to a first down. Tension mounts here in the Gator Bowl, awaiting the big decision, as time is called for a measurement. They stretch out the chain, and it's short by inches, and the volunteers take over to the joy of Miss Tennessee. The orange and white, ready to set sail offensively, first and 10 at their own 35, with its single wing to the left side. Tailback Al Carter gets and is off to the races around right end, streaking for 18 big yards before being hit by hard tackling John Crow. It's first down Tennessee at the Aggies 48. Junior fullback Carl Smith turning on the steam around left end this time, racing inside the Texas A&M 40-yard line. It's another Tennessee first down. From the Texas A&M 35, the snapback is to tailback Al Carter. But guard Alan Goring knifes through to jar him for a six-yard loss. The Aggies force Tennessee to punt again and now try to get their offensive machine rolling from their own 26-yard line. Arsman barking the signals, handing off to Taylor, and the senior halfback churns out six yards. With the first down, 10 yards to go at their own 37, the maroon and white call on fullback Dick Gay, who is having a sensational afternoon. He piled drives for 12 yards before being tackled by Carter. Second period, Gator Bowl, Jacksonville, Florida, no score, and it's a real grueling test of football. First down for Texas, with quarterback Osmond carrying around end for six more yards. But the Volunteers' defense becomes stubborn, and with it fourth and five at their own 47, the Aggies are forced to punt. Osborne fumbles, tries to get off a pass, but it's ruled as an incompleted pass, and the Volunteers get a golden opportunity taking over at the Texas A&M 47-yard line. Single wing against the tee. Single wing left. 
for Tennessee. In Texas territory with some fancy faking, fullback Smith rambles over right tackle behind good blocking for seven yards. And the Volunteers are on the move at the Texas 47. Tailback Carter gains three before running into All-American Kruger. It's Carter again threading the needle to the right side. But the door slams in his face and he's short of a first down, forcing Tennessee to punt on fourth down. Now here are the Aggies on the move from their own 30-yard line here in the second quarter of the Gator Bowl game with a second and 12 to go. Quarterback Osborne lugging the mail. Runs into end uh, Bobby Overholt, who won't be fooled. It's a five-yard gain. And from the 35 with a third and seven, John Crow explodes through a big hole over right tackle for six yards. The Aggies are a yard short of a first down at their own 31-yard line with Tennessee being penalized Five yards for being offside, giving A&M an automatic first down. Scoreless game so far. The Aggies on the move at their own 46. First down, fullback Gay is called on. He delivers the mail for four yards over the right side. And now with its second and six at midfield, quarterback Osborne calls on the big train. John Crow hits left tackle for five yards before running into Schaefer. Third down, a yard to go at the Tennessee 44. As the Aggies are on the move, quarterback Osmond runs into trouble over right tackle, but spins for enough yardage to give them a first down. From the Tennessee 44, it's third and 10 to go. Osborne hands off to Crow, and the slow motion camera gives you a clear view of All-American John Crow being jarred loose to the pigskin, and volunteer fullback Carl Smith recovering for Tennessee at the volunteer 30-yard line, and taking off on a fruitless attempt as the ball has been blown dead at the 30-yard line. As the first half of the 1957 Gator Bowl game comes to an end in a scoreless tie. Leading off a sparkling halftime program for this record-breaking crowd is the Drum and Bugle Corps of the U.S. Air Force. Sharing the stage with the drums and bugles is a special Air Force bagpipe unit. The group draws a rousing ovation with its bright music and precision marching. Force group is a ceremonial drill team. Those are real bayonets, and the points are quite sharp. Being introduced to the crowd now are three of this year's Miss America contestants, Miss South Carolina, the fairest of the fair from the Lone Star State, Miss Texas, and the pride of the volunteer state, Miss Tennessee. Now, some fancy maneuvers by the high steppers of Hines Junior College in Mississippi. These girls have won national acclaim and they've appeared at numerous major festivals. four in a row and not a single misstep. Something like a three-ring circus. And that jump rope is burning, too. The high steppers continuing their spectacular show. Under the field now comes the famed Pride of the Southland Band from the University of Tennessee for a musical fantasy, a trip around the world. A 
a curtain rings down on a spectacular halftime show as the players come back onto the field. So for the second half kickoff, here again is Dick Stratton. After bruising scoreless tie in the first half, Texas A&M halfback Conrad gets ready to kick off for the start of the exciting Gator Bowl second half. He kicks off to Tennessee and it's deep, taken by tailback Gordon who changes his plan of attack and decides to down the pigskin for an automatic touchback. So the volunteers from the Southeastern Conference, the University of Tennessee, open up the second half play here in the Gator Bowl, first and 10 at their own 20. Tailback Gordon gets on the first play and drives for five yards over left tackle before running into Osborne. That was quite a halftime show that we saw, don't you agree? Both teams are really keyed up now, and with some fancy faking, senior fullback Tommy Bronson explodes and bulldozes his way up the middle for 11 yards, tackled by Crow. It's first down, Tennessee. Tennessee fans come to their feet as tailback Gordon jump passes complete to left end Darty. He's in A&M territory. It's a 17-yard pass play. And now with the second down and 12 yards to go at the A&M 49, Gordon looks as though he's going to pass. But as he goes airborne, he's tackled from behind by end John Tracy for a six-yard loss. The volunteers punt on third down. Here are the Aggies operating on their own 14 with Crow gaining four yards. From the 18, with its second down and six yards to go for Texas A&M, trying to get their offensive machine going, why well, it's Conrad getting off a quick kick that's partially blocked by end Jim Schmelcher. The kick traveled only 16 yards out of bounds at the A&M 34, and head coach Bowden White is leading the cheers from the sideline. And now a golden opportunity for the Volunteers. First and 10, Tennessee at the A&M 34. Single wing to the right. Bobby Gordon turns up five yards here in the Gator Bowl as he gets five yards over right guard. With a third and five now at the A&M 30, Bobby Gordon is called on again. He fights for running room and is tackled by Conrad just short of a first down. This is a big play for Tennessee. Will they go for it? Short of a first down at the 25. It's single wing to the left. They call on fullback Bronson. He has rough going, running into a stone wall defense led by Dick Gay. Time is called for a measurement. It's just enough for a first down, an important one for the University of Tennessee. Now with its second and eight to go, Tennessee at the A&M 22, fullback Bronson does some fancy maneuvering. Going wide, around left end, finally knocked out of bounds by John Crow after an eight yard gain. Another Tennessee first down. Tennessee fans come to life as the Volunteers are just 14 yards away from a touchdown. The snap back is to Gordon, who bobbled the pigskin, and center John Gilbert recovers for Texas A&M to end a Tennessee threat just 17 yards away from a touchdown. From their own 17, Milstead calls on Taylor, who can't get by Darty, gains just a yard. The Tennessee defense holds again, and on fourth down, Texas A&M goes back in punt formation at their own 25. Milstead will do the booting, Gets his boot away, Gordon waiting for it upfield at the Tennessee 32. Hauls it in, starts back, but Stanley stops him before he can get up too much steam at the 35. Gatable fans are really seeing some sensational jarring tackling here this afternoon. Tennessee first and 10 at their own 35. Here's Bill Anderson, the wing back, swinging into action, twisting and turning and streaking into Texas A&M territory. It's a 20 yard gain and a Tennessee first down. Gator Bowl, Jacksonville, Florida, third period, Tennessee nothing, A&M nothing. With its second and 10 at the A&M 42, tailback Bobby Gordon, who is the game's top star so far, points out his blockers, carries the mail, and delivers for 18 more yards to the Texas A&M 27. First down, Tennessee at the 27-yard line. On the move again, but fullback Tommy Bronson fumbles and alerts Ken Beck of A&M recovers to end another Tennessee threat. What a thrilling Gator Bowl game this is. Scoreless to date. It's second and seven now for A&M at their own 32. Osborne hands to Taylor, who rambles for five yards. Third down, two yards to go for Texas A&M now at their own 37. With quarterback Osborne getting, keeping, and rolling out to the left side, gaining a first down before being tackled by Tommy Brunson. The Aggies are thrown for a loss and now need 18 long yards for a first down. Osborne gets 11 back with a tricky jump pass to M. Tracy. But it's still third and seven for the Aggies at their own 46-yard line. Osborne calling the signals, getting, 
faking a jump pass and running into Justin after a yard gain. As the third period ends, nothing to nothing, in a game that's being enjoyed by some 30 million television viewers around the country. It's the fourth and final period. The Volunteers are on the move at their own 15-yard line with a first down. Single wing to the left against the stubborn defense. Tailback Gordon finds daylight and is jarred loose of the pigskin by John Crow. But Darty is alert, recovers for Tennessee, and the play is a seven-yard advance for the Volunteers from Knoxville, Tennessee. With a third down and six yards to go at the Tennessee 28, Gordon goes back in punt formation. Gets his kick away. John Crow waits for it. Calls it in, but can't find any running room at the Texas A&M 30. Fourth period. And now it's second down, 10 yards to go for the Aggies from Texas way at their own 30. Quarterback Osborne pitches out to John Crow, who passes for Tracy, but a game-saving defensive play is made by Bobby Gordon, who knocks the pass down. However, the Aggies are penalized 15 yards for an eligible receiver downfield, so the Aggies are forced to punt deep in their own territory. Osborne gets it away, Bobby Gordon signaling for a fair catch at midfield. So Tennessee takes over here in the fourth and final period of the 1957 Gator Bowl game, with neither team having crossed the goal line as yet. It's first down and 10 to go for the Volunteers. Fullback Smith gets to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. A stone wall, no game. Second and 10 now for Tennessee at midfield, with tailback Bobby Gordon swinging into action. As he gets, looks for a pass receiver, and finds Bill Anderson down the middle, and the senior wing back from Florida way, rambles down to the Texas A&M 30. A 19-yard play. Tennessee suffers a two-yard loss with 12 yards needed for a first down. Gordon spots Darty out the flat, completes it for an advance of seven yards. Late in the fourth quarter, no score, and Tennessee is threatening to break up the scoreless tie. With a third and three at the AM 23, Gordon explodes over left tackle for four yards. And it's another first down for the Bowls of Tennessee. First and 10 from 19 yards away. Good blocking opens a hole for Gordon to race through. And an explosion of sounds around the world as he hits head on to John Crow. A jarring tackle that has injured Bobby Gordon. A tense moment for Tennessee fans. Will Gordon stay in the ball game or not? But Gordon is right back in action with the first and goal at the Texas A&M seven-yard line. The 189-pound senior tailback Gordon is loose again, rambling for five yards before being stopped by Teller. Now it's second down and goal to go for the Volunteers. Two yards away from what could be a game-winning touchdown. Bobby Gordon tries the left side, but the door is slammed in his face. No gain. That means they're still two yards away from a touchdown, and it's third down. Tennessee fans ring out, go, go, go. Texas fans ring out, hold that line. Gordon is called on again. He crashes into the line, and he's still a yard short of a touchdown. Time is called by Tennessee for the big decision. Will they go for the touchdown or will they attempt a field goal? A tense and exciting moment for the fans here in the Gator Bowl and all across America as junior fullback Sam Burklow comes off the bench to attempt a seven yard field goal. The Aggies come pouring through but the kick is up and splits the upright to give Tennessee a three to nothing victory. And the Bowls of Tennessee take home the Gator Bowl Championship for 1957 in a football game that will be long remembered for its jolting, blocking, and vicious tackle. A football game that wasn't decided until the final minutes. Exciting and hard-fought football in typical Gator Bowl tradition.